foolish, you know, but no, it's showing us our walk, our walk with God for us to enter into the Holy of Holies, which we have uh, uh, because of uh, Messiah's uh, uh, death and resurrection, we can walk boldly into the Holy of Holies. But that doesn't mean we can walk in boldly with all our sin. You know what I mean? We have to be careful because the priest dropped dead. How much more us? You know, so every all these cleanings and all these changes that they have to do, there's significance to that. Okay, and I, I believe later on in the law we do get to that. So let's go now to the 31. The priest must make, uh, must keep the ritual unclean out of the inner court of the sanctuary of Yahweh. And that's found in Numbers 5, 2, and 3. Numbers 5, 2, and 3. Numbers 5, 2, and 3. I, was, uh, uh, I have a whole bunch of history books that deal with Israel and, and way back then, and actually I wanted to share with you, brother, that that uh, that insignia that that we have on the sign, the messianic sign. There was a church in Israel. It, it was a Catholic church in Israel that was excavating to to build their church, and they found pottery that has that symbol on it, and they they don't know. Like it's old, but they don't know exactly when. And I found that interesting because I always thought that that was a relatively new symbol, but way back then, you know, they had it. And I have a picture of the pottery. It's pretty neat. Um, anyway, so I forgot my original point. <laughs> okay, let's go. The priest must keep ritually unclean. Oh yeah, now I remember. I have pictures of the of the temple from Solomon's <laughs> temple, and then pictures of Herod's temple. Right? Of course, they're not accurate to the fact of like the way the, the walls were painted and all that right because we have no idea but they were able to excavate and see where the walls were and and it's neat the, especially Herod's temple I liked it because the way it was you had the holy of holies where the priests were then you had the section where Israel was what it what it says right and then you had the for the men and then you had over here for the women and then over here they had a wall of perdition, perdition and that's where you kept the people that were like Gentiles as an example and, and I find it interesting because by no means did those Gentiles pass that wall of perdition. There was openings in there where, where the Jews could walk through, but they could not pass because they were not holy, for lack of a better way of saying it. So that, that was very significant, and that's basically what, what it's talking about here. It says uh, in 5, 2, and 3, Command the children of Israel to send out of the camp every leper and everyone who is, has a discharge and everyone who becomes defiled, uh, let me explain the power. The power can be imparted from from one to another. In other words, uh, if you get a disease, you can pass it to somebody else. Okay? Uh, uh, from a being. And then number three says, send out male and female, send them outside the camp, so that they do not defile their camps in the midst of which I dwell. So, you know, it, it's so funny because God knows. God knows, you know. And, and we, like modern science, is learning about, uh, as an example, there was a doctor that uh, babies were dying. I can't remember. I wish I could remember the doctor's name, but hopefully you've heard the story and might remember. Uh, there was a doctor that babies were dying in the nursery, right? And they couldn't figure out why. And of course, this was, I think, in the 17th century or something. Anyway, they couldn't figure out why. So he started watch, uh, watch, uh, watching the doctors, what they were doing. And what they were doing is they were going from the dead, from the morgue, handling the bodies, and then going to deliver the babies without washing their hands, because back then it wasn't a big deal. And this doctor said, why don't we try doing that? You know, see if they'll make a difference. And he and a couple of doctors started doing it, and there, the babies they handled weren't dying, but the other ones were. And the other doctors got angry at him, and they they said he was insane, and they locked him up in the in an asylum. And now. Every doctor washes their hands. You know what I mean? Obviously, there was some truth to it. And then look here in the scripture. God is separating because God knows that this stuff spreads. What it, What is it spiritually? Sin. Sin spreads. You know, everyone is welcome in here. I know that. And I, everybody I talk to, you're welcome to come. And hopefully we can teach them the word of God, how to live, that they will reject their sin, right? And repent. However, if they decide to keep their sin, the scripture is so specific on what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to confront them, right? If they don't change, we're supposed to preach it. If they don't change, we're supposed to kick them out. It's scripture. It's not me. It's scripture. But what happens? They kick out the people that are speaking the truth instead, right? So, that's right. You know, God knows what he's talking about. Yeah. I, I, <clears throat> where it says, where was defiled by the dead? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, 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 I believe that, you know, not only are we supposed to excommunicate 
a believer, a professing Christian, an individual that claims to be born again and a child of God, if they are living in sin and refuse to stop sinning, we're supposed to ask them to leave the church. But it says also those that are defiled by the dead. Now, people that have received false teachings through preachers that are dead, that have been defiled by error. It says, you also ask them to leave. Because then they'll contaminate the whole church with their false doctrine. And it's, it's an unusual thing to hear in church, but yeah. it's true. It's, it's biblical, like I said. It's so true because they become like big, and then they, well, yeah. if you don't listen to them, they'll, they'll kick them out and they'll follow. But still, they'll, they'll cause, you know, gain the harm. You know, you know, See, the, the problem is the, the misconception of the word love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in their way of thinking, well, that's not love. Yeah. You need to keep him here so he can change. But basically, you know, if all the churches were preaching the truth, and they would be excommunicated. Well, there would be no church. They would have to come back and repent of their sin. Mm -hmm. But now, since everybody accepts anybody and everybody, and I don't want to get involved in your life, I don't want to uh, discourage you by telling you the truth, you know, that's between you and God. Go find any other church that, where they will be defiled and they will make it to heaven, even though they go to church every Sunday or, you know, every Wednesday. <laughs> that's right. And that's a big, big misconception of the fact yeah. that because I go to church, I'm going to make it. No, right. that's not true at all. So, uh, okay. Well, and here, like I, I shared with you the spiritual application, but the physical application, of course, that it's speaking of is if somebody's sick or whatever, we separate them. You know, I, I've been to the hospital before with friends that are in the hospital that have some kind of uh, a certain disease where you have to put the mask and everything before you can go in to see them, you know. You have to wash your hands going in and wash your hands coming out, you know. It, it, it's for safety reasons, you know. It, it, and that's in the flesh. How much more in the spiritual, you know. <laughs> so, Okay. Uh, let's go on. Now, one thing I see also, again, in the latter part, it says that they defile not the camp, you know, that they defile not the house of God in the midst whereof I dwell. And I believe that if the preacher, the spiritual leader, is not doing that job of really, you know, teaching people to get out of sin, and they allow the people in the church to continue their sin, God leaves the church. Yeah. Yeah, the Bible says right. that too. The glory of the Lord will depart. Right. So we need to we need to be careful with that. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because we can go through the motions and be blind. I, I think of uh, Samson, where the Bible says that when they cut his hair, yeah. he didn't even know that the glory of God had departed. And when I read that, that jumps out at me yeah, because exactly. I see that in the church today. They don't even know that the glory of God has departed. Right. You know, it's a, it's a terrible thing. You know, and, and that's the problem. We look at our eyes instead of looking at the spirit. So. Yeah, they were saying about you know. You know, you get them out of the church, and the next word says the Israelites obey and expel them all from the camp. That's right. The next word. Yeah. And you know, in, in the law too, in the law too, it says that um, when they were sent out of the camp, usually it was a week or a month, or you know, there was always a certain time, and then they would allow them to come back. And the priest yeah. would check them and yeah. make sure that they were store. able to come back in. To you know, them back. Yeah, and, and we see that with Miriam, right? She was cast out, and then she came back, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. God yeah. does that. Just because we're kicking them out or whatever, hopefully they'll be convicted while they're out there and come back yeah. in. That's what happened in Corinthians, you know. You, you, you give them to the devil, you know, like they did, and then he came back. You know, That's right. That's for restoration, to bring them back. Yeah. Amen. Okay, uh, 32. The priest must be regarded as holy. I know this is something that we're not used to hearing. But it's in the scripture, Leviticus 21.8. Leviticus 21.8. I mean, they've turned the, you know, and I know the scripture says that they've turned the things of God into, you know, backwards, everything's all crazy. And it's funny because they'll say, you're, oh, you think you're all holier than thou. Yeah. That's actually a compliment. <laughs> not so, they mean it as a curse, but that's a compliment. Praise that's God. Number you know? Uh, let's use 21 8. 21 8. No, that's number 32. Or yes. yes, number 32. The priest must be regarded as holy. Leviticus 21 8. <clears throat> it says, And you shall set him apart, for he brings the bread of your Elohim. He is set apart for you. For I, Yahweh, setting you apart, am set apart. In other words, holy is what it means, set apart. But notice, he's talking about the priest. The priest is holy. And he's being led by Yahweh, and he's bringing the bread, which is the word of God, right? Sure. And that's how we're, uh, we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be holy as kingdom priests. We're supposed to present 
this word, not some man's mm -hmm. book, you know. I, I, I know that I always talk against books, and, and I know, brother, you always say it's okay to read them as long as you read the Bible more, whatever. You know, and I'm, I, I've gotten to a point where I don't even want nothing to do with books. However, I mean, there are a couple that I've read that are pretty good, you know. Yeah. But still, like you say, we need to spend more time in the Word. We need to, if, if you're going to read the book, read it. Make sure it confirms the Scripture. And, and unfortunately, in books, they'll put one verse and then say stuff. It's better to go to the Word and look for that verse and see what it says in context. Because it's so easy to twist the Word. So, okay, that's that. Comments for one? Well, just that, you know, one of the definitions of holy is a saint. And I hear a lot of people in church today, but no podemos ser santuchos. You know, we can't be saints. But the Bible says you are a saint. Yeah. Live like a saint. You know, don't li live a defeated life. You know, walk like a saint, live like a saint, be a saint. You know, I, I shared with the some brothers and sisters recently that if we were, and I, and I hope that we will, but if we were to live uh, the life as far as the church goes according to the scripture, people would freak out. They would they would hate us. They would oh, yeah. curse us. They want nothing to do with us. But yet we're going to be doing exactly what the word of God says. Right. You know what we're supposed to do. You know it's it's our job. You know, and and granted, I mean I can only speak up for myself. In my life, there's so many things that I've learned as far as the scripture goes that I haven't um, started doing or imparted yet. Right. And most of it is because of a lack of knowledge. I'm still learning, right? Like, yeah. like the feast, as an example. The only one I keep is Passover. I recognize the others. I read the scripture during the, you know, I, I make it a special day, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, uh, tabernacle is an example. I, I don't have enough wood and stuff to build a little tabernacle. Otherwise, I probably would. And my wife already thinks I'm crazy in some of the things I do, so she definitely thinks I'm crazy in that. But however, it's it's biblical, it's scriptural, you know. Yeah. So eventually, I pray that begin doing these things as we learn them and as we grow, right? Okay. It's all in that time. You know. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, basically, what right. people people don't understand, you know, for example, if you would build the tabernacle, they think, well, you're being too legalistic. You're following. But they don't understand that all these things is to help us to remember what God has done in our lives right. so that we don't forget because we as human beings, yeah. we yeah. have a tendency of forgetting how the Lord saved us, what He has done for us, and He continually reminds us because we're like sheep, the sheep are dumb, mm -hmm. and we're dumb, you know, and we have to be yeah. constantly reminded, 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 because if we're not reminded constantly, we forget and we stop. That's right. That's right. You know, and it's just like our children, right? We, yeah. we might spank them yeah. for doing something like t trying to touch the socket, you know, they're going to get spanking a good one. Yeah. And hopefully it's hard enough and it hurts enough that they'll remember how I don't want to do it. But if they go back, the next one will be harder. And eventually, when they get close to that plug, they're going to say, oh, wait, I remember that it hurt. So, you know, they won't do it. And if they actually do touch it and get that kick, well, then they learn, right? They're not going to do it, right? So, so that's the same thing with God. You know, we learn things as we go. You know, He, he is our Father. He will be more severe the next time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And, and I know... I know brother says that he used to used to take you a while with three times before you listen. <laughs> you know, for me, I'm, I'm probably there a little bit for, it takes me a little longer sometimes because sometimes I just don't get it. You know, I'm very ignorant when it comes to to literally doing what God says to do sometimes, you know. Okay, so let's go on. Number 33. The priest must dress in special priestly garments. Exodus 28. Exodus 28, and it'll be 2 through 43. Exodus 28. Mm -hmm. And it's basically the whole chapter of 28. So uh, I'm going to read it, and we'll stop every so often so that we can uh, explain it and stuff. So the priest...